Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Core Values mm. with the All Consuming Podcast. Uh, today we're doing Core Values number 11. That's right. And I'm glad you're still here, Tyler. But I have a crazy story to tell you before we start. Uh, so, I'm ready. So I've been doing like a yard work project, whatever, you know, springtime's here. We're having nice sunny days once in a while. I went to go turn on my sprinklers, right? I was talking okay. to my buddy and he's t- complaining about how he just turned on his sprinklers and his, uh, uh, like his double check, uh, what are they called? So it's basically the part of the water system that prevents like your water from going back into the city water. Yeah. So backflow preventer, that's the word. You guys have city water, no irrigation? No, it's, yeah, city water. Oh, interesting. So anyway, yeah, I was talking probably. with my friend, Spencer, yeah. and he just turned on his sprinklers and his backflow preventer cracked on the bottom right and so he's like taking it apart buying parts like getting it replaced and i was like boy that sucks i'm glad i don't have to deal with that so as i'm doing my yard work i'm like you know what i should probably turn on the sprinklers because it's like 70 soon Mm -hmm. and so i turned on my sprinklers and uh, dude just as soon as i open up the water it just sprays straight down almost the same spot as my friends and i'm like dude what are the odds like how, how how did i manage to like break it the exact same way as him that's anyway it sucked it wasn't that big of a deal it's just it would have leaked water and it would have cost money over time and it would have gotten worse over time so i was looking at like youtube videos how to replace it and i'm oh, like yeah. man i hate plumbing like i hate water i hate digging dirt and rocks so i called the guy which i don't ever do and yeah. they came out and they busted it out with three dudes in like two hours Sweet. and they just replaced the whole thing because Anyway, it would have been it would have been a pain. Uh would have been a pain if I had to do it. And yeah. the problem with it, with mine is like on both ends it was copper pipes. Oh yeah, yeah. So I would have had to cut a that copper pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, I'm not I'm not doing that. So he took all that out, uh put in new stuff, and then, you know, I had to go to our uh, community group, our Bible study for church. And they just finished on their own, and they texted me, and they're like, hey, we finished. If you have anything, to, you know, any questions, take a look at it in the morning. Looked at it in the morning. It was spraying again. Oh, no. But late, further down the line, uh, where my sprinkler box is, which is PVC, right. but the joints on the PVC were just, like, cracked. And it was just spraying. And I'm like, Jeez. man. So I called him again, and I was like, Ugh, you know, hate being that guy. But I was like... You know, th- these things are breaking. He's like, oh, we'll be there. We'll, we'll see you in 20 minutes. And they came back and that fast. They came back and they replaced all that with, with a, n- a new thing and they didn't charge me any money. And so. Wow. Yeah, that was great. Dude, here's yeah. the here's the crappy part. Now, I have a, a few unpopular opinions about lawns in general. But number one, I, I replaced my filter a few years back that goes from my irrigation to my sprinklers. And I did it myself. And I would go to Home Depot, get what I needed. Filter? And... Like the whole like water filter, because ours comes directly from the river, right? You get all this gunk and stuff. And so there's like a, a big oh. filter, then it goes into our system. But anyways, went and whole, did the, redid the whole thing, right? And inevitably, I come home and I don't have the exact right size. So I got to go back. Then I don't have the right size again. Then I got to go back to Home Depot again. And it's like four trips. Dude, just buy all the sizes. And I Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and by the end of it, like I have a bunch of different sizes and pieces I don't need. And I did it the wrong way. Um, and so I had to take it apart again and then put it back together. And finally, after seven hours, that would have just cost me a couple hundred bucks, I did it myself. Just so I can keep a lawn green in a semi-arid desert that never should even be green in the first place. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Dude, I I don't understand why we have this like let's just go to a park. We don't need grass anymore. I'm so <laughs> close to rocking my freaking grass that like just move to Arizona. Dude, I want to. My uh, my my buddy, he he literally just put rocks in his front yard cuz his HOA doesn't care. My HOA, I think they would like I don't know, crucify me or something. They probably would. They would, oh yeah. But like I just don't get it. Like I think it's a boomer thing. I know you're kind of a yard guy. I I'm, think it's I a love boomer my yard. thing, man, dude. I, I don't grass. understand it. I don't get it. I don't know. People are allergic. You're, aren't you allergic to grass? I am. You f- love your grass? Um, I hate it. I don't want to step on it. I just want it to be green and look good. Why? Because it looks good. No, I like, it looks I good like, because we tell ourselves it looks good. Because I worked hard People on it. People 
wore bowl cuts in the 90s and they thought that looked good too, Gary. Yeah, I had no, a bowl cut. Nobody worked hard I on look that. Back at my, <laughs> I look back at my childhood and I see my bowl cut and I'm like, what were you thinking, mom? Right? In 15... 15- well, I don't know what to tell you though. So I, for me, if I'm living in you know the suburbs, I want to have the perfect grass, the what? good yard. Because it looks, it, that's how it's supposed to look like in that area, right? I don't know. That's how we've been conditioned. If I lived in the woods or whatever, I'd be like, grass, yard? Yeah. Why? Like, we're just going to walk through it and make a trail, you know? Yeah. Like, I could see, like, you know, killing plants and bushes and stuff to get them down low so that you can see and, you know, keeps it clear. But I don't know. It just looks good. My neighborhood that I live in has three parks that we pay for through our HOA. And we also have to have grass for our kids. What? Why? Yeah. And you know what happens ask, with the ask grass? Ask your kids if they want to roll in the in the grass or if they want to go roll in some pea gravel that cats use as cat litter. <laughs> you know what happens with grass though, Gary? It, it uh, grows. And then every single week I got to mow it. And then I got to fertilize it. And then you got to keep the weeds out of it. And if you're lucky, you're not going to get crabgrass because then you got to like deal with that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just it's just this whole big hassle. I hear your complaints. I do. I just don't get them. Yeah, but when you're on top of it and like it, it looks good. It, it, do you have the best looking lar- yard on your street, or are you just like I don't care what their yards look like? Very middle of the road. Like I just got to make sure I'm better than like the neighbor across the street, <laughs> and I'm good. All right. Yeah, I don't know, but I just that's my rant. I just don't get yards. Like I, were... I guess if if you buy your house and it has a good yard and it's just like uh, I just have to maintain it, uh, right? There's not a yeah. lot of reward in that, which I did. You know, I bought my house on a street with an HOA and everything's perfectly done. And there's a company that came and I'm like, I got it. Yeah, you know, don't mow this yard. Um, but like on the on the flip side, if you got a house where the yard was just trash and there's no grass at all, and you worked hard to like reset everything plant new seed and you got this these plants grass growing that's yours yeah. you know i don't know there's just a lot of reward in being like yeah i maintain this i make it look like this i i am doing this like without me i know what it looks like you know that's true i i guess i just don't see that reward my dad like we used to live in my neighborhood we used to live in the same neighborhood back a few years ago um and he'd drive by you know and uh, looks like you got a few weeds in your front yard, you know, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you know, like, dude, I don't care. Hey, like, I, I, I know a guy. We call him. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't care. Like, and that's like the weirdest thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. If it was, if it was up to me, like I would live in an apartment or like buy like some condo that you could lease. I don't care. Like as long as they didn't have to deal with. No way. Like, my, my parents, they moved to like a retirement, not a home like a community neighborhood yeah mm-hmm. neighborhood to where they have a full yard and all that stuff yeah but it gets taken care of through their hoa and then my wife just tells me well you can pay someone to do it i can't i'm, I'm 35 do you know the judgment that would <laughs> I be just thrown do, yeah. down on me <laughs> if i'm paying somebody 40 bucks a week to mow my lawn uh yeah yep anyways rant over sorry let's get into these songs all right. Oh, geez. Well, that's what we're doing. That's right. All right. So, got a couple songs today. Um, a yeah. uh, lot of uh, big names. A lot of a lot of albums dropped today. Yeah. But uh, let's start with uh, I don't know. First one on my list. Memphis May Fire released a new single, and so Maddie Mullen said on Instagram that this song is a sign of things to come. Okay. Or like this is the sound they're embracing now. I don't know. I also know that he's about to go on a big tour with Amberlin, and he's doing oh, Amberlin yeah. stuff. Cool. So, don't know. I don't know what this means, but here we go. The song is called Chaotic. I think I cry if chaotic. I don't taste the pain when I stay neurotic. Chaotic, 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 chaotic. I mean, that's pretty heavy. Kind of a step away from their previous album. Well, let's see what happens, right? 
I don't know. It sounds like this. This could be like a commercial song, like used on commercials for like a party or like football game, pre-game kind of thing. It's not very chaotic. As much he as cra- he keeps saying, he it craves is. chaotic. Oh, okay. That's the problem. He wants it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do want to say, Matty Mullins, phenomenal vocalist. He has great range. Yeah. Awesome. Here we go. I don't know, pretty catchy. Yeah. I, I like it. I, I love Memphis May Fire. I love their melody and like just their choruses, like just how he builds into that. But his screaming is also top notch. I love it. I, I never know what I want from them, you know? Yeah. So it's like, here's a new Memphis May Fire. I'm like, I don't know. I'll just listen and see what you give me. I I really don't know. I like that. I do like it too. We got a blast. There's your dubstep. <laughs> it's fun. It's actually really fun. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's catchy. Fun. It's fun. Yeah. And there's some heavy parts. And, like the music stays fairly heavy most of the way. The singing, you know, is what gets kind of poppy. Yeah. I feel like this is a very common sound of metalcore right now. Absolutely. You know, just those driving low toned guitars yes. and throw in occasional high riffs breakdown yeah yeah that song's gonna be stuck in my head i already know it. absolutely so up next uh is a band called red letter rising yeah and i'm pretty sure they're they call them yep they call themselves christians and they're a new metal band so let's get that started See their album cover? Mm. It's got like a doll with oh yeah, like a voodoo doll. He's got pins on him and a hat backwards. This is supposed to be Limp Biscuit's hat. It looks like a. I mean, Corn has that almost same little doll thing. Mm. I I like it slow and cool. Yeah, I think they're. I think they're a solo project. Oh. New metal. Very much so. Kind of sounds like uh, Brian Head Welch's yeah. "Love and Death," you know, I like how Brian Head Welch sings that in that. I ca- I dig this genre. I mean, new metal's great. So, who are these? How did you hear about these guys? Uh, Spotify told me. Spotify's like, hey, yo, check it out. I I wasn't even following them or anything. Like, I was like, okay. And I would read their bio, saw a Christian new metal. They're on a bunch of other like Christian rock and hard rock playlists and stuff. Cool. No, they're sweet, man. I dig it. Yeah, so they had an album come out last year. So, but everything's very new with them. So this is a new single after that album. Kind of curious. I do miss new metal. Yeah, 
Yeah. And it's funny because like the new metal I listen to is not the new metal you listen to. I know. We're very you know, different. Very different in the new metal genre. I guess we cross over a little bit in POD. That's yeah, we, that's, that's where we touch fingers. That's, that's like my bread and butter of new metal. But. I listened to Limp Biscuit like recently. I was like, dude, they were they were cool, man. What about Pillar? Like early Pillar? I didn't listen to Pillar until they covered that one song that wasn't Christian song but made it Christian. Uh, uh color. Whoa, hearing it's your last sound now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so many people were so upset when they did that. They have, like, the very end of that song, they scream. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, boy, let's go. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Fireproof is their uh, new metal mm. album. That's that's the that's the one. That, like, when that came out, it was, like, the same year as, like, TFK Phenomenon. Yeah. And, like, both of those are just, like, turned me to a new metal kid when I was, like, what was it, 12, yeah. 13 or 14 or something? Yeah, what year was that roughly then? Like, I don't know, 2001? Yeah. That was a crazy time for music, for sure. Maybe two or three or four? I don't know. I don't know. That was a long time ago, dude. So, moving up next. Uh, I'm going to just get it started. The band's called Light the Fire. The song's called Eulogy. I made a reel of them not too long ago, and uh, I wished it did better. Dude, talking about reels though, your little as they dying duck reel has gone dude, off like three million. Yeah, dude. Last week we talked about it and I'm like, dude, we're about to break two million. <laughs> now we're at three million. Three million plays. Yeah. Yeah, dude, and it's bringing in a lot of followers, so that's pretty cool. Yep. And then we're gonna be like, check out this new episode, and everyone's gonna be like, unfollow, unfollow. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So these guys don't consider themselves or label themselves as Christian, but these lyrics, very Christian. I really like this style for sure. Kind of reminds me of Parkway Drive a bit. Old Parkway. This is like an outcry to God. Yeah, it's, they have like two vocalists, it sounds like. And yeah. the, the one that screams really low, like he kind of reminds me of uh, Nodes of Ranveer. Oh, yeah. And I don't. Right there. Love that. Dude, for sure Christian lyrics. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, these guys are from Dallas, Texas. For fans of Counterparts, Being as an Ocean, Straight from the Path, Wage War, The Ghost Inside, and No Bragging Rights. Cool. This was the part I put on the reel. With uh, Spider-Man crying. Oh, yeah. Super emotional. Yeah, it's great. 
Kind of has like that idle threat. Yeah. What about so I know you like group shouts. What about group singing? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Kind of nostalgic a little bit. Like it feels like maybe a little like earlier type of music. I like it. Yeah, I'm always a fan of the songs that you know tug at your heartstrings. Yeah. Uh, there are other songs really good, a bit heavier than this one. Yeah. Bass. Bump bump the end. Pretty sweet. Oh yeah, that's cool, man. More people need to get into them because I really like them and I want to see them light the fire. Light the fire. Yeah, we didn't even get to talk about their art cover with the house. <laughs> I don't know. What's the most famous house cover art ever? Do you know the answer, or are you asking to see if I know? Only one I can think of is American football. But it's like Midwest emo. I can't, I don't know. I don't even know why I asked you the question. Uh, what about, what about Eminem's album? Oh, that's a good one. Which one is that? What album is that one? Dude, uh, his well, er, first one, right? Is that what Marshall, it is? Marshall Mathers. I don't, I Dude, truthfully I, I don't, know. don't know a discog- I don't know Eminem's discography. Dude, if I, but if I say it, you'll know it. I know his, uh, that first song, like, uh, the, the real slim shady no before that there's an album or maybe a song my name is what my yeah. name is chicka, chicka, yep, yep. slim shady back when i thought eminem was just a funny guy is that the the marshall mathers lp no way no i don't think it's on spotify dude has to be i got the slim shady lp with that's him pro- on the dock i think that's it was a shim, slim shady was it Anyway, we were going back uh, 25 years here. 25 years? No way. Yeah. I guess, yeah, probably. Yeah. I was in elementary school. Yeah, Jen was, uh, it, so we, you know, we're like just, the kids are in bed, we're waiting to make sure that they're not going to leave their bed, so we can like go watch TV yeah. or whatever. So they're just scrolling through, and she's like trying to come up with a playlist for her uh, half marathon she's running tomorrow, or in a couple of days. Yeah. And, uh. She found like a '90s playlist, like songs from the school bus or something, and like she's like, you know this one, and it's like, you know, the most obvious. Like, of course I do, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> but some of them I haven't heard since I was on the school bus. Right. And it's like, geez, that's 25 years. Hi, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Wild. So here's a new song uh, from Like Moths, plural, to Flames. Heard of them? Couldn't tell you a song. Really. No, I know I, I, that I find that like I like it. a lot of their stuff. Right, but I'm I think I'm the same way. Like if I look at their album covers, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember. There's a good one that one and that one. But uh, so this is like uh, the fourth single released. They have a new album coming out next month. To be clear, they're not a Christian band. They don't claim that title. Yeah, this song's awesome. called Disassociative Being. Looks like it's a three-man band now. Really? Like three performing band or like three and they have a drum machine? Couldn't tell you. I'm trying to find more information. Oh, well, they've toured, obviously, so... Yeah, I see them of the live picture here with four guys. Yeah, his uh, scream, that high held, you know, that. Yeah. Reminds me of Memphis Mayfire. Absolutely. 
but these guys, man. Yeah, I like their music. Yeah, this seems like right up your alley. This big style. Spacey with electrical, or, you know, EDM metal kind of core, elements. And clean metal core, like. Big production. Yeah. Like, those guitars are just so tight, you know? Yeah. Then you got a catchy chorus. No breakdown, we're grooving. Oh, I love that behind there. That guitar just a little bit distorted in the Yeah, I might be listening to this uh, EP. You know, the four singles released before the yeah. the album's out. Probably on a this weekend on the drive. I do this one. Like moss Boom. flames. Yeah. I remember I really got into them in college, and I thought they were Christian for some reason. And then I remember they like released an explicit song, and I was like, <gasps> "Isn't there another Moth band? Moth Alter? <laughs> yeah, Moth Alter. That's it. Yeah, they are a Christian band. They are. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done anything in a couple of years now. Hmm. So, so moving on. So up next, uh, Lightworker. So Lightworker dropped their full length today so yeah you got the whole thing how the beautiful decay is what it's called 10 songs and some people that i know like from our discord server bought their vinyl and they already got their vinyl Ooh. they got it yesterday did you buy it yeah but i didn't get it yesterday so i guess i have to wait i guess that's the joy of living on the east coast next to all right this, next to you everything know, yeah, where everything gets mailed from and packaged. Dude, but they've re- Lightworkers dropped so many awesome singles so far, so I'm yeah. excited to listen to the whole thing. Yeah, it's going to be great. So this one I chose, right? So there's uh, seven songs I've never heard. Yeah. I chose this one because it features Wolves at the Gate. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Fallujah. Is that how you say that? Fallujah. That's how I say it. So here we go. Let me press play. The song's called Mea Culpa. So the whole band, the Wolves of the Gates on here. I don't know, I guess. A band combo. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, We'll we'll see who we hear. Maybe uh, Joe Alarcon, their guitarist. Maybe he's doing some guitar work on it or something. Great like, direction. Awesome. So, have you heard any other vocalists besides Joe? And, and his other clean. Right there. Steve Kabuchi. There you go. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, 
I can't tell if the vocalist of Fallujah was there too. And watch, I'm saying it wrong and everyone's gonna correct me. Yeah! There we go. There's another one outside of Joe. This is fun. It's like Wolves at the Gate, but heavy, you know? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. That's a joke. It's a joke. Go get him, guys. <laughs> Oh boy. We're gonna get a breakdown in this? We're gonna get a breakdown? Tricksters. You darn tricksters. So cool. What's that high pitch? Whee! Something spooky. Ooh. I wonder if that's the other guest band. Yeah. Do you have any other guest vocalists or bands on the album? Let me take a look. Man, the whole time the guitar is just going. The whole time. Fun. That's what I love. Man, I only have like two sips left of coffee. I really got two sips of coffee? Got a whole Left. cup of coffee. I drank all of it. Just sitting here drinking coffee and listening to metal. All right, up next, The Ghost Inside. <gasps> you put a Ghost Inside song on here for so me? They got, well, I mean, not, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I did it for you, Tyler. Thanks. This is the only thing I did for you. <laughs> <laughs> so the album just dropped today, right? Uh, and they had like, I don't know, four singles. But the album's called Searching for Solace. Despite their name, they're not a Christian band, to be clear. They don't label themselves that way. Uh, but I picked a song just based on some conversations I had on Discord uh, as people were listening to it tonight. And uh, some people were like, this is my favorite. And I listened and I was like, mine too. Yeah. So I chose the song Secret. Here we go. Very, um... This is more in that Gary er genre of metalcore. They're definitely, though, they've got, like, positive lyrics for the most part. Yeah. They do have, obviously, they have some cuss words or whatnot, but it's, like, nothing that's, like, crazy. Nothing blasphemous. I used to just love, like, Between the Lines, Edge and 45, like, their old stuff was my jam. Yeah. yeah, they're like a metalcore band that they do a lot of... I don't know, punk? Yeah, kind of. But it, like, a lot of breakdowns, you know. Like, back in the day, especially. But they had a pretty uh, horrific, like, tour bus accident. Did you hear about oh, yeah. that? And the whole thing that. went down. And, like, I'm pretty sure the drummer like, got really hurt to where... I don't, I don't fully remember, but it was bad. Like, bad, bad. Might have had people that were, like, were with the band that ended up dying there or something. Well, I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, are they the ones that got hit by a dump truck? They got, or I don't, I think I don't, a different band. It might have been them, yeah. Yeah, it left two dead and ten injured. Their car accident. 
wild. They head on with a tractor trailer. Jeez. Brutal. Pretty sure their song Aftermath is like kind of a song about that for you, like intense emotional song. Yeah, all five band, band members have survived. Yeah, that was wild. When was that? 20, 2015. Nine years ago now, dude. COVID didn't pause the year. But yeah, pretty uh, catchy, nice, melodic. Yeah. Good guitar tones. Got some of those electronic. Oh, yeah, here now. That might actually be the guitar, I don't know. Picking. The delay. Yeah, fun stuff. So, 11 songs out. Cool. Check that out. Yeah, they're like, uh, they're up there with the uh, Memphis May Fire, Wage War, Mainstream, Metalcore. Yeah, I feel like their sound has changed a little bit, but, you know, I mean, a lot of bands' sound changes as they get older and mature. Yep. So, up next, a band you've probably never heard of. I'm not lying. Taylor Swift. (laughs) I picked and a Taylor Swift song. Do that. So You're fun so story. Nice. So her her album dropped today, right? Yeah. The tortured poets, poets. department. Yeah. Right. So uh, apparently, so many people were trying to listen to this right at midnight, you know, or nine o'clock on yeah. our side, that it crashed Spotify servers in certain cities. That's insane. So like, some guys in Florida are complaining on our Discord, like, nothing's loading. I can't listen to the new Ghost Inside. I can't listen Swifties. to this. And you find out, oh, it's because all those Swifties are staying up late to hear the new album. Uh, so I'm not a Swiftie. I listened to like three songs and I picked this one. And it's like a way different direction than what she's done. Yeah. So she, it's a lot she more dabbles songs. in different genres. But here, let's get it. Let's get started hey, so we can get this over with. For tonight, I did get my uh, Taylor oh my Swift uh, Eras Tour cup that I'm drinking my iced coffee out of. So. Apologies to all you metalheads who abhor Taylor Swift. Dude. Okay. And you're welcome to the Tylers out there. That... I think I think the biggest thing when you look at a band or an artist, right? Mm-hmm. We have this, this genre that we stay in, this metalcore, hardcore scene, right? But we like to dabble outside of it sometimes. I feel like Taylor Swift has gone more like alternative folk pop alt pop i don't know and so i enjoy that more than her country stuff that she started with yeah yeah and i do i don't like her poppy songs the ones that are on the radio that are catchy and get stuck in your head and higher pitch this album is like bluesy lower register yeah. vocally and it's kind of depressing yeah she went that way like my favorite albums are oh boy here we go folklore and evermore and they're literally like folk alt like good stuff like Bon Iver is on there and he's like one of my favorite artists oh, yeah, so yeah. yeah you know this but is way out of my wheelhouse like I opt in to be your odd man out I, found I do get why people don't like it because she has kind of a formula obviously you know and people like the formula I stopped CPR after all its no but, use. Yeah. She puts on one heck of a show, and I saw her live, dude. Like, I'm pissed off you played for three a- three and a half hours. And- yeah, but the amount of money from the amount of tickets sold to and the cost of the production, she still made bank. Oh, like, dude. They, she puts on crazy shows worth she tons makes, of money. She's, you know, billionaire now. So, everyone yeah, made a big a, deal. Oh, there was a. It. Uh, Babylon B or someone said that Taylor Swift has made so much money she's now a millipede or something like that <laughs> like dude you know. I saw this one thing where like all these like Swifty kind of left you know super left people are like billionaires ew eat the rich billionaires are so terrible and it's like headline Taylor Swift becomes a billionaire slay girl you know like you <laughs> slay girl 
<laughs> like it is kind of a double standard, but yeah, yeah, for sure. You have to they, like the people with the money. Right? They're making a big deal that she paid her truck drivers or whatever like hundred thousand dollars or something. It's like yeah, it's a lot of money. Not for her though. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, but whatever. It's cool. So what do you think of this song? It's cool. It reminds me of her last album, sort of Midnight's, but. It's good. I, I my wife. I like a super I like fan. the lower tone of it. Yeah, and it's not all like high. And... Yeah, I agree. I told my wife, I was like, okay, if we talk about Taylor Swift tonight, what do you want me to say about her? And she's like, well, just with this album, if you knew like her backstory, you just realize how much of a lyrical genius she is. <laughs> And she's serious, you know, and she knows all about all that, so I'll take her word for it. It I do appreciate, too. Taylor Swift writes her own music. She plays instruments. She's very talented. Yeah. So there is that. I mean, yeah, there's a ton of popular mainstream musician artists, I won't say musicians, uh, who don't, you know, they buy their songs. Yeah. Now the real question is how many of our listeners have skipped this conversation? I respect all of you. I respect every single one of you that had put this into like two times speed and they're just flying through this. Yeah, wow. I just didn't know what to pick, and I didn't want to pick one with explicit, because then we have to list our yeah. episode as explicit. So that is kind of tough. Like it's hard to listen to her. Like I can't listen to her in the classroom or like with my kids because she likes to say f bombs now, dude. But She's a woman now. <laughs> slay girl. You know why not? Okay, yeah. well, you. I really appreciate you adding that for me. It means you're you're a true friend. So. Yeah, I was kind of hoping like, uh, I don't. Know, I was just curious the conversation would get out of that. But hey, everybody, new Taylor Swift. There's there's a solid sixteen <laughs> songs on there, and the shortest one is two and a half, and longest looks like it's. 540 check so. it out and if you don't probably if you don't matter. like it or you hate it you know blame tyler <laughs> if you love it and you think it's great you could thank me because i put it on here uh she was my top artist on spotify last year and i know you like oh, everyone's like tyler what's your top artist what's your spotify thing and you're not like telling you <laughs> oh it's not working <laughs> It was, i don't it's i gotta darn go look technology at it i think it was like taylor swift turnstile like august burns red or something you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Bluey made my top ten. Dude, talking about releases, how did we not put a discussion about the new Bluey episode that dropped? You seen it? Yeah, I did. I did. Bluey. Jen and, and the boys watched it without me the night that I went to that Bible study or whatever. Oh, yeah. And then the, you know, Jen's like, "It's thirty minutes long. It's so good." It and is I'm like, good. Cal- calm down. And Henry the next day is like, "Dad, tonight we have to watch Bluey again. You missed it." Dude, I got so sad. Yeah. So the premise is like they're selling their house. We don't fully know why. Like Bandit's got a job. Right? He got another like, job in another city, and they have to make move. more money. <clears throat> gonna have to move, but they made so many memories in their house. And so they're selling their house. The kids don't want to, right? Like Bluey is out well, of the game. Bluey doesn't. It. Bingo has no idea what selling your house means. But then like, Bingo fine. figures it out. And it's so sad, you know. Yeah. And she's out there trying to fix it. Stop taking our stuff. And eventually, <laughs> like, and, and Chili, the mom's going along with it. But eventually, Bandit, like whole thing goes down their house doesn't go through with the sale and he like pulls out the yards the for sale sign and like when chili tackles him and you see her shoulders like going up like she's sobbing uh-huh i'm like oh my gosh and i like i'm getting emotional right now dude <laughs> over a freaking cartoon like oh yeah, yeah. it's so good blue is great man yeah Blue's jen great. like kept looking back at me like uh eh? seeing, <laughs> seeing if i was crying and i'm like <laughs> I was close, but since you did that, you distracted yeah. me oh. and it, it tore the tension. One of the, I mean, I can't think of a better like kid show in recent times that has been released. Like Blue is so awesome. It's oh, been... I agree. It's great for the whole family. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Well, there you go. That's the best release of the night, right there, Blue. Yeah. All right. So that's it for um, our new releases for that section. Up next is the uh, encore, Ooh. provided by our patrons. Uh, I posted the list this morning, uh, and I chose one of them because we were talking on Discord, and he liked our forklift song. 
last week. <laughs> and uh, so this is Heavy Metal Prophet, and he's like, hey, if you like that one, you should listen to The John Candy. Have you the heard of John, the John? I've heard of John Candy. No, I'm pretty sure uh, I've showed you this song like two years ago. So this is from 2022, I think. Double checking. Yep. <clears throat> the song is called The World is a Vampire and It Feels So Good. Do you know that? So this is like Smashing Pumpkins. No. Oh. Do you know that song, Bullet? So Butterfly what, Wings? So the John Candy is okay. uh, metalcore... Ex- extreme something. I don't know what to call it. What do they call themselves? Let's let's do that before we actually press play. Because I don't think we'll be able to talk because there's just so much going on in these songs. Whoa, really? Uh, it says, uh, the John Candy has been described as many things. A nostalgia machine, an embarrassment, sample core. That's probably what I would call it. So he, he grabs samples from movies and other songs and puts them in the song. You think they sample Smashing Pumpkins in this? The world is a vampire. Okay, that one line, yes. Perfect. It's in there. I'm in, but baby. I th- there's Paramore. There's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, it, there's tons. Uh, nostalgia core, tribute core, confusing, a boy band, the girl talk of metal, and the most original, non original group currently in music. The John Candy is whatever you want it to be. So there's your dis- there's your description. <clears throat> they go all over the place, uh, but their vocalist, like, he's got really good screams and growls in there. But uh, let's get started now that I've, like, built the premise and everyone's like, oh, what are the, what are we going to hear? Are John, you ready? John Candy. Well, they had me at John Candy. He's one of my favorite uh, actors, man, of all time. All the right, Polka got- King of the Midwest? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the Polka King of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, anyways, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Arnold. I'm going to introduce myself. My name is John Kimball. Huh. I love my car. What? You did, you've you shown me not this song, but you've shown me one of their songs. I, it might have been this one. No. Paramore. Ready? Dude, that's sick. <laughs> like, why do they have to sample everything? Why can't they just do this? Party pooper. Party pooper. <laughs> Is that kindergarten cop? That uh, one, yeah. This part? He's saying arf, arf, arf. <laughs> He's like making fun of the arfing. We'll just arf, arf too. So is this a whole band? Is it one dude that just goes nuts? I don't know. I don't know, dude. Let me see if I can find something in their bio. You hit the kid, I hit you. <laughs> Fun. What? That's pretty fun, dude. We are torturing <laughs> our list between Taylor no Swift and this. In tune, you arf arf too. All right, here comes your yeah, bar. Smashing Pumpkins. But it's not bull with but butterfly wings. Is tonight. And Paramore yeah, again. Paramore. And Green Day. Where's the Green wow. Day? Wow, Green Day is a... Da-na, da-na. Oh, was it? Yeah. Now. 
Oh my god. Mr. Brightside? <laughs> It's killing me! Dude, the killers like rock too, man. <laughs> this is like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> now you're mine. And panic. Ooh. He is making fun of our farf, dude. There you go. Dude. That is like actually just like a song quiz. A movie and song quiz. That's all it is. Yeah, so you can lose track of time like listening to a lot of their stuff. Yeah. And so I remember listening to the John Candy quite a bit in 2022. You know, that was like in the middle of COVID. Yeah. And just spending a lot of time doing that. Not the middle. It's like the end. You know, when everyone's like going back to work and, you yeah. know. But uh, there's some really good songs, but there's also a lot of songs with like explicit stuff. So, like, I just want to I want to listen to it really loud, like in the truck. <laughs> but whenever I'm like driving somewhere, like there's usually the family, oh, so yeah. it's like oh, I can't just like sit down and listen to this. And I want to listen to it, so I can't like work at the same time because then I'm not actually listening. Yeah, you know, it's like background music, and so your kids are anyway. gonna go to school and be like party poopa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that one, uh, I'll totally have play that one. Yeah, and they'll, fun, they'll be dude. like, Dad, you know that part where someone says the world is a vampire? What if they made a whole song like that? You know? Or a whole song like Paramore. And I'm like, well, actually, that's fine. Actually. It is actually. Yeah, that's crazy. There was like that moment, like, whatever that was. And there was like seven songs, like, just being sampled yeah, at once. Yeah, like the, the breakdown section of the song. Yeah. Three-fourths of the way through where it's like... Here's this one. Here's that one. Here's this one. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, I like that. That was that was unique. Thanks, Heavy Metal Prophet. Yeah. The John Candy. Yep. Clever yeah. stuff. What's your favorite John Candy movie? I don't even know a John Candy movie. Okay. Uncle Buck. So that's John Candy. Plane, I trains, and automobiles. I, I know the movie, but I. I cool I Runnings. I know that movie. I know the movies. I just don't know the guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, you do. He's big, big boy. Yeah. Okay. Name a bunch of movies he's in. Uh, Home Alone. Yeah. He's the Polka King of the Midwest. That's what I was that, saying. That's what I know him from. Oh. <laughs> it's from that one line in the movie. <laughs> Plane. You never seen Plane Trains and Automobiles? I, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I made a reel a long time ago with dogs and grow beards all over by Devil Wears Prada. He's driving in the car. Yes. Yeah, that's plane trains and automobiles. Okay, I, I remember seeing the movie with my dad when I was a kid. Yeah, it's a great one. It's like a Thanksgiving movie, which like never is made. So that's kind of cool to watch. Yeah, dang, he died a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And Yunk from a heart attack, yeah. age 43. Sad. Well, now that we've talked about uh, John Candy, Taylor, uh, Swift. Taylor Swift, Bluey, uh, <laughs> Mainstream Metalcore. Well, this was our 11th episode and might be our final. Um, <laughs> nah, it was fun. Just wait this for is our, what 13th. Happens. our 13th episode will be really weird. Why? Because 13 is an unlucky number. Oh, man. true. But, you know, I think that's what Core Values is. It's like, dude, this is what came out this week. We don't control it. We're just having fun, dude. That's what we yep. do. We just meet, we have fun, and we talk about it. And if that means that we have to listen to Taylor Swift again, I'm not against it. <laughs> so I was thinking, and yeah. maybe I'll say it on the podcast, and uh, listeners can be like, yeah, do it. Or, well, most of you just say, yeah, do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, we don't get actual. You guys like, are all too positive. No one's like, yeah. no, no, guys, stop doing that. That doesn't work. Everyone's just like, it's great. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> How do you feel about my intro last week talking about my poop anxiety? Oh, it's a great idea. <laughs> that was that. Do that it was... again. Do it again. Art. Art. <laughs> that, that was a conversation. <laughs> but what I'm getting at, 
uh like on weeks like like this week when there isn't a lot so i think there was actually like six new songs that yeah. i picked right and i added in one that was from a, a couple months ago and then yeah but uh if we if like we did our new releases new songs and then like i brought a song you brought a song yeah that we could i was thinking about that too and then patrons pick a song but like something that we're listening to like right now yeah yeah, I think but you know, good. I don't want to cool. go too long with these episodes, and we're already about to hit an hour. So, yeah, just a thought. So, I guess we'll wrap up with this. Uh, thanks everyone for listening to us. Uh, we hope you have a great week. Yeah. We'll hear you. We'll see you next week. You'll hear us. We won't see you or you. Wow, English. We'll be back. We will be back <laughs> with number twelve. Gary. There'll be another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and. Join our Discord server, become a patron. You can buy us a cup of coffee on there and get access to ad-free uh, episodes and early access to episodes and behind-the-scenes stuff. But, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, that's been, like, leaving reviews yes. on our episodes Dude, and stuff. did you see the latest like, Apple review? I didn't. Okay, can I read it? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, so um, let me pull it up. It says, and it's from Poga Rocks. And he left us a five-star review, and he said, Tyler and Gary, they make podcasts great again. <laughs> did did uh, we tell I'm them to pretty say pretty sure we did say that in an episode. They're listening to the end. <laughs> like, like, Dude, that's great. Yeah, I think we did say it. Yeah, just copy-paste that. Well, thank you, Poga Rocks. That's awesome. Yeah, we've also got a lot of reviews and like feedback on like our episodes. People are leaving stuff Dude, on there. That's our that's our next um, merch. Like Spotify. Drop. Red hat font make podcast great again. Yeah, but Dude, there's no logo on there. Sell it. People are like, what's that front? Or or <laughs> just like a hat that says like I miss for today or something like that, you know? Like I feel like we could sell a lot of those. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yep, Anyways. Yep. Bring back Christ Core, something like that. <laughs> make make Christ Core great again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, yes, <coughs> killing, killing me. That's it, right there. All right, we just found so it. we're wrapping Anyways. up here. This is literally the end. But thank you, everybody, for listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, have a great week. Thank you for listening.